Okay, are we ready? Lose the hat? Oh, but this is hiding my COVID hair. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't cut your hair for seven months. So, anyway, look how far down the rabbit hole we've gone. So we started out so simple, we just had a camera attached to the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, battery powered, just mount it on a regular tripod, take it out and it just works. That does work for one or two minute exposures. Uh, once you start getting a little longer than that, then you can actually still see some star movement. And I thought that it was my polar alignment isn't perfect, which that could be part of it. But uh, I think just about as perfect as you can be, there is still some movement when you get up into the three, four, five minute exposures. So I decided I would try doing auto guiding. So I got a guide scope for the ZWO 120mm guide camera. And once you have that, you need to have a computer to plug it into. So you could plug it into a laptop, but I got the uh, ASI Air, which is basically a Raspberry Pi inside this nice uh, aluminum case with some power management and Wi-Fi and some other things that are built around the Raspberry Pi. So the idea though, is that you can point this at a star and it will track the star in the view of this camera and try to get it to not to move even one pixel. When it does see it moving, it'll send little nudge commands. So one of these cables goes from the camera to the tracker. So this is a ST4 port that is a communication protocol for giving the thing little nudges. It used to be in the old days, apparently, people would use a hand controller and they'd be watching an image on a guide scope and they'd be by hand giving it little nudges. So now we have software that does that, watches the camera and gives it little nudges. Uh, so then the other cable is essentially just plugged into the, the uh, ASI Air so that it can see what this camera sees and it can do auto guiding. So there's a bunch of other videos on how auto guiding works, how to get that set up. I'm just trying to go through you know, the progression as we fall down this rabbit hole and have to start expanding this system. So we're still on this little star tracker mount, but now we've added auto guiding. Another thing that you can do with this is use it to do polar alignment. So using the same camera, I can ask the ASI Air to do what's called plate solving, where it'll take a picture with the camera and it'll solve for where exactly must that camera be pointing to see those stars. And if you take one image and then you rotate the mount, say 60 degrees, about 60 degrees, take another image between those two, it can solve for where the rotating platform that the camera's attached to must be pointing. So it's not really solving for where the camera's pointing, uh, it's solving for where the rotating platform that it's attached to must be pointing. So this doesn't need to be calibrated perfectly, but that ends up calibrating the mount perfectly. Uh, so this thing will take a couple of images and it'll tell you how far you are off, and, uh, and then you can make small adjustments, take another picture, and keep doing that until you've refined the polar alignment to you know much more accurate than you could do optically through this viewfinder. So you still kind of set it up by hand optically, you know, visually, but to get it as close as you can, but then you make fine adjustments with this. You know, far beyond what you could do by eyeballing it. Another thing that I found while trying to do super accurate polar alignment is that the equatorial mount that came with the Skywatcher Star Adventure, or theirs, the Skywatcher version, is not the best. Okay, it's pretty good, but it's pretty solid. But this thing from William Optics is a replacement for it, and it is extremely rock solid. It is super preci precision milled aluminum. Everything about it is super precise. All the controls feel so smooth and so precise. You have dual screws for the altitude, whereas you didn't on the other and you have locks for all of the adjustments and there's no slop at all or anything when you unlock these. On the other one, when you unlock the altitude, then there's a little bit of slop this way until you lock it back down, but you can't adjust it with a lockdown, so it's, it's a bit of a pain to try to get a perfectly accurate polar alignment, whereas this makes it so, so much easier. It's well worth the upgrade. So that's about it. Those are the upgrades, you know? And so then now we have this computer, we need to power it. So I've got a battery pack. But still, all of it just attaches to the tripod, a little Manfrotto clamp for this, and this just Velcros on. So it still is one nice contained unit, uh, but it's getting more complicated. A lot more wires, a lot more little bits and pieces. Might come up with another way to mount this. This is just mounted on the hot shoe. Actually, let's just do it right now. Why not? So I can take another ball head adapter, and uh, let's just take this out of the hot shoe. 
and unscrew this. I've seen people also take a uh, L bracket for the camera and then mount the guide scope on the side. That might be a little more more stable. But let's try this out. Something like that, you know. Tap that up. So, so yeah. something like that. That's the idea. So the system's getting a little more complicated. It's getting a little crazy. Uh, seems to work quite well though. I can take up to 10, 12 minute exposures and I still don't see motion, which I think is not usual. I think that's, that's, that's really stretching it. And it seems to be working though. Uh, one interesting thing, a lot of people mount their uh, guide camera to the top of a telescope. And so it's always pointing the same direction as the telescope. Uh, with this, you know, I can end up pointing the guide camera anywhere. I can point it off to the side a little bit, which means if I'm trying to image something that's near the celestial north pole, and so the stars in that area are not moving as much as they are further out, uh, I can just point the guide scope further out and, and have no problem. I actually have had trouble with this pointing too close to the celestial north pole. Uh, the stars aren't moving enough to do the calibration. So this lets you just point it anywhere. I'm not sure if that's the best thing to do. Uh, it's probably fine for this kind of a system, but maybe on a bigger mount, everything's more precise, longer focal length, imaging scope, everything gets, you know, more stringent requirements. And I've heard there's a problem with uh, differential flexure where as this thing moves, the imaging camera kind of flexes a little bit and the guide camera flexes a little bit, but they flex in different directions. And so it kind of appears to be motion when it's not. Or essentially, if you hold the guide camera perfectly steady with good tracking, that doesn't necessarily mean the imaging camera hasn't moved relative to it. So this kind of system may not be the best. In the future, I want to get a proper telescope, mount the guide scope to the top of it, and do that. It'll be one of the next steps. But this is pretty fun.